This guy, senior correspondent for ABC for so many years, also a White House correspondent for so many years for ABC, a brilliant mind and analyst on politics. I'm really honored to have him here with us. Jim Avila, everybody. Come on, put it together for yeah. Jim. Yeah. Well, What's up with you, today. Jim Avila? Thank you so much for being um, a regular listener, viewer, and contributor. Very, very cool. Well, you know, it, it, yeah. thank you, and, and I appreciate being here. I just should say that it's a little ass backwards that I'm paying you money. But <laughs> <laughs> I can't saying. argue with that. <laughs> I've turned in. Both of us worked in industries where we didn't ever have to appeal to the public for money. I mean, if I think I did PBS telethons and I did, you know, muscular <clears throat> dystrophy or whatever, you know what I mean? Retinitis pigmentosa, whatever it was I was raising money for. I wasn't raising money for my ability to continue broadcasting, you know, that was always covered. So it yeah. is a crazy spot. I, I um, always tell well, when I get a yeah. request to do things, I tell them I'd love to do it, but it's not a hobby. Right. Right. I, yeah, that that is probably something I should remember to uh, to say as well. Uh, but I'm really I'm I'm so delighted that you're here. And um, in the rich tradition of uh, our show, uh, you'll you get, get nothing. Nothing. Not exactly. Right. Uh, but uh, <laughs> buy you a dinner here and there. That's about it. You uh, will yes. you, John? Will you uh, try to ride herd over the bots? Thank you, the bots who get into the. Um, uh, once in a while, get into the chat. I want to ask you um, about a couple of things. It was a bad week for Donald Trump. I kind of have led that uh, in our in our headlines today, and I was waiting to discuss it with you. Uh, yeah. You can tell me why it was a tough week. This is a guy who's used to grinding through the justice system, putting off all kinds of lawsuits, essentially playing the delay game. He got the special master. No one could see his taxes for a long time. What's happened this week that uh, kind of begins to cook Donald Trump? Well, I think what irks him the most probably is that he is um, uh, the, the the court has ordered that he got an appeals court. So he still has one more step, I think. Um has ordered him to do to release his taxes, um, and to not to us, but to the House Committee investigating uh, January sixth. The question is what they're going to do with them, and they probably have to do it before the end of this month, uh, because uh, to, then we go into the next House, which is run by the Republicans, and that's a whole other set of issues. Uh, I think the I, uh, what they I know what they've done already is they've said that they're going to. Um, so they're going to, they've, they've ordered, they've written a letter to the House Select Committee telling them not to destroy any any documents, which they weren't going to do anyway. But what that means is they're going to attempt to go over it again and uh, uh, go over those some of those documents and look for misstatements and make it a big clown show about how, you know, there were mistakes here, maybe call some witnesses back and try to embarrass them. What what the problem is with, the, with all this is that the biggest problem for me, we're going to have to listen to Jim Jordan again. You know, I I do not miss him. Uh, you know, the uh, the guy who was the... Uh, yeah, he's a fire-breathing dragon. The co of, West, uh, wrestling coach yeah. who would let uh, kids get a, get abused while he was not looking. That's right. Um, you know, I don't want to hear him anymore. He's just terrible. Uh, you're going to hear more of Kevin McCarthy. We're going to hear those ridiculous claims over and over again. So that that's the one development that is probably bothering Trump the most is those his taxes may be made public. We may actually see that he's not as rich as he thinks he is. And we see how many dealings he's had with Russia. And we will we'll see uh, if he is, in fact, um, cheating on his taxes. Uh, so that will be interesting. Um, and he can no longer say I'm being audited. The other thing that happened was uh, that his um, uh, he he has been his shield by the that Florida judge who was uh, ordering delay after delay uh, for the for the uh, Justice Department to look into uh, what what kind of documents he had and to explore them and to use them to punish him or to charge him with a crime um, has been thrown out and so that judge is no longer relevant. The DOJ has uh, its uh, has access to those uh, documents now and can use them, uh, although they're 
could be an appeal on that as well to the Supreme Court. But, you know, he hasn't been doing that well with the Supreme Court. Even he hasn't been doing that well with any court, aside He's from the one judge that you mentioned. Court. Yeah. His record yeah. as a loser continues. And yeah. Uh, yeah. that's probably irking him a bit, too. So much I, losing. I mean, he has a criminal... Uh, he has criminal cases that he has to deal with as well, Jim Avila. Uh, hello, uh, Jim, you got it? Uh, he has criminal cases, is what I was saying, uh, as well. Yeah. And uh, in fact, his companies right now are in court. You know, they're, they're suing, uh, and Weisselberg, who is his former um, uh, executive, uh, there are now accusations of, you know, this is what it's all about, is uh, sheltering money and removing money and not paying executives with... Uh, uh, certain taxable income, but instead paying off in, in gifts. I mean, there was a, a lot of untaxed income that the government is after, and those were all benefits paid to Trump executives at their, uh, in these different ways. Weisselberg just is the poster child for that. There were others along the way. So, yeah, a little um, disappointing yeah. in, the, in the deal that was made with Weisselberg because it allowed him to kind of squeak through and not into, into re, he only revealed things that happened with the Trump organization. He would not reveal stuff that, that nailed Trump himself, uh, which was a disappointment. Maybe that's all they can get. I'm not in those negotiations, obviously, neither are you. But um, they got something, but they didn't get enough. Uh, there's still lots of stuff to come out of New York and in Georgia, uh, where uh, he's losing battle after battle there, too, including having to have you know guys like Lindsey Graham testify or at, or at least uh, take the fifth before the grand jury. Uh, to Jim's point, uh, Weisselberg turned state's evidence to save himself from a lengthy prison sentence, agreeing to testify in exchange for a shorter jail term. He didn't say anything that implicated Trump's companies in wrongdoing. Uh, he's atoning for his sins, says his uh, lawyer. But as part of the plea deal, the prosecution forced him, she continues, to testify against the company that he helped to build. Now the prosecution's case rests on one thing, trying to convince you, the jurors, this is said obviously in the closing uh, summation, that Mr. Weisselberg's actions were done in behalf of the company. Uh, it's likely they were done in behalf of the company, but that's a, that's her defense. Yeah. Anyway, that's what's going on in Trump land. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it, you know, Trump has had a bad week. Um, and also there continues to be evidence that this new special prosecutor is a serious person who is uh, aggressively taking on uh, Donald Trump. Uh, and, you know, I, I really believe, I mean, there, there's, there's a whole spectrum of political thought on this from he's going to get away with it all to he's going to be indicted tomorrow. I think it's going to be in the spring before summer that I think he will face indictment, most likely uh, indictment on January 6th stuff. I think he'll, I think they'll let him, my own analysis of this is that I think that they might let him squeak by with some kind of fine or hand slapping on the documents material, although that is terrible and I don't think that should be the case, but there hasn't been any evidence revealed. In fact, there were, there was some evidence revealed that he was not uh, involved uh, in trying to sell that material or give that material uh, to our enemies. So if he wasn't doing that, if they don't find any evidence that he was doing that, if it was just an ego grab, which is not hard to believe, I've kind of said from the beginning, I thought that he's done this because he thinks everything is his and he just grabbed it and took it out and doesn't, uh, you know, wanted to show it to people. Okay, when he was proud of this love letter he gets from the North Korean leader. Yeah, but it's one thing to, to it's one thing to hit the road with a love letter from it's one thing to hit the road with a love letter from Kim or a couple of love letters or some kind of Putin thing. By the way, it's not cool. I mean, it's not legal, but it's one thing. But then when you leave with eleven thousand documents, many of which are top secret. Sorry, man. I mean, wh wh where does ego? It, it might be ego. You're right, but it's sort of like uh, it's it's unfettered. It's ridiculous. It's so completely out of control, Jim. You know, yeah, and you're avoiding subpoenas as a result. Him. Yeah. I don't think they'll allow him to walk, period, on it because of exactly what you say. I do think, however, that he will make some kind of deal, uh, that his lawyers will make some kind of deal where he doesn't get jail time for that be unless they find that he has done something very nefarious with those documents. Uh, but as of yet, they've not. So I kind of, my 
you know, and you have U.S. attorneys on this show and you can ask them. But my political judgment is that they will use it to make him look bad. It'll it'll really hurt him in running for a reelection uh, and they'll slap his hand. Maybe they'll even get some kind of deal where he agrees not to run. But that would be that would be hope, wishful thinking. Well, uh, nefarious, yeah, is a is a ding word. Uh, the uh, Proud Boys now and the sentencing there and January 6th, and you referenced it here, I think there might be another shoe to drop on that, and and that could be huge, uh, I think. It, it should be, in my judgment, bigger than it is. I mean, it's crazy. The guy was yeah. involved in a coup, I mean, we're, and, we're, yeah. and, and we're talking about him, and we're talking about him, and we can sensibly talk about him as the presumptive nominee of the GOP in the general election. Yeah, he definitely... Why are you yelling? Uh, yeah, he 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 definitely started the thing, and he definitely didn't try to stop it. And I think that he he colluded with those who um, who were actively at the Capitol. And I think that's where his most that and Georgia are where he is in most danger. Uh, I think those two things could lead very well lead uh, to an indictment and a conviction. You know, the, the, always the issue with this is not so much anymore. I mean, he's been damaged so much, I believe, with the general public, not his 30 percent, but the rest of us damaged so much that it's going to be very difficult uh, for him to make the argument which was being made early on and which I kind of listened to was that it's bad to indict a former president, that it looks bad. I think that's gone away. Uh, I think that is not the issue anymore. I think the issue now is if he is criminally culpable and all these other people are going down uh, who just followed his direction and his lead, why isn't he going down? And I think mm -hmm. that if there's any way to do this, this, this prosecutor will. I think the, the remaining problem remains. Prosecutors want convictions. And if they think that if they call a jury, although the jury is going to be in Washington, D.C., where he's not very popular, uh, but if they think that if he called, they get a jury in front of a jury, they're going to get one or two that are going to be Trump supporters who are going to no, in no way vote for him to be guilty, then that's a problem for a prosecutor. And they're worried about that. I think that's that's an issue. Uh, Am I living in an yeah. alternate universe? It's 2022 and he's not in jail. Like, I, <laughs> how how does this happen where well, there's almost as much a, a coup of like what... I just can't. It's like a beating my head against a brick wall situation. Yeah, I and mean, <laughs> you're right too. I mean, if it, certainly if it was you, you'd be in jail. Um, and and he's and the rest of them are in jail, in prison already. I mean, the not not the ringleaders, and that's the problem. But those guys who are marching in the Capitol, they're all in prison. Now that was the low hanging fruit, and I think that's what the Justice Department went after first. And they'll use them, uh, use some of them as witnesses. I think some of the Proud Boys are going to turn when they, when they see the jail is a, is in, ends in their future. Uh, that's going to be a problem uh, for Trump. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but going after the ex-president himself is a much bigger deal, and they have a problem with that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, of course, that's indisputable on one level. And yet, you know, here's a guy, as I say, who was involved in a coup. I get that he was president, but he was involved in a coup. I mean, uh, so uh, I don't think you can treat him with the sort of mainstream kid gloves that we've seen other ex-presidents be treated. Nixon comes to mind. All right. So, I mean, the way he th there was a I'm pardoning. Not, of, of don't, Nixon. don't think I'm defending him. But if I had oh, no, 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 yeah, well, he'd no. be in jail. No, no, no. So. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I mean, no, I, I'm sure you'd like to. I, I shouldn't say I'm sure, but I'm. I don't think you'd be at all bothered to see him uh, uh, go up the river. Uh, you mentioned the fact that the special master was taken away, that uh, the appeals court you know, took out the special master in, in uh, the documents case. So, you know, that whole idea somehow, and he got that judgment from his, the initial master that was assigned, got that judgment from the Trump-picked uh, judge. But apart from that Trump-picked judge, he has not, as you said, uh, gotten any kind of air support from any other judge, Trump picked or not, including the Supreme Court justices. I want to turn to something else you and said. the appeals you, court too, Mark. This yeah. appeals court that that overturned the uh, Florida judge, two out of three were Trump appointees. All of them were Republicans. So he yeah. didn't fare well even there. Sorry. Yeah. The, and that really is a win for the Justice Department and a loss for Donald Trump. 
So let's go to the uh, I wanted to just touch on the primaries because Joe Biden is pushing for something that I think makes sense. I've never understood why the I mean, aside from the way the rest of the elections in this country are set up, which is, well, that's the way we've always done it. The Electoral College, it's a, you know, okay, I get it. It's it's past its expiration date, as is the primary schedule. Starting in Iowa, it's it's absurd. You begin and love my, my Iowans, but it's a lily white, white state. It, it doesn't really represent the breadth of America dem- from a demographic standpoint, but more to the point, they have this weird, it's not, it's a caucus. It's not even a primary, you know, it's, uh, so anyway, my, uh, my lengthy preamble is to say that Biden has suggested a change, and it's an aggressive change. It's to move on the primary schedule for the Democrats, South Carolina, to the head of the line. Yeah, and there's some there's reason to that, and despite the fact that he won the South Carolina primary, but the uh, the, uh, the the real reason for the country is that it's of course more diverse and more reflects uh, the general population of the United States. Although I would argue that while it has a huge black population, uh, which votes Democratic and should have a voice, there are not many Hispanics there, not many Latinos. Uh, It seemed to me like a place like California would be a great place to start, which has both uh, African Americans and and Latin Latino Americans. So I would, you know, I would push for that, but it seems as though they want to hold that till later on for the big finish. Uh, but yes, it's a, it's a smart move and it's and it's totally uh, makes sense. I mean, it, is, is he gonna make some New Hampshire people mad? And does that mean that if New Hampshire is kind of a swing state that we might, that the Dems might not win in New Hampshire? It's maybe, but I think they'll get over it. I'm getting some questions about the, the lame duck session and uh, I wanna quickly touch on uh, one thing that I mentioned in the first half hour, and it's regarding uh, their last couple of minutes with Jim Avila. Uh, it's regarding the uh, congressional mandate, essentially telling the rail workers to go back to work or risk being fired. Uh, right. They wanted that sick leave. They didn't get it out of Congress. It seems as though it's the thumb on the scale for one side of this negotiation and not for the other. Look, if I was deciding it, they should get sick pay. I don't think there's any progressive who doesn't believe that they they deserve that kind of. Uh, it's it's kind of ridiculous in the in our where we are now. It's like Kim's comment: How can we be in 2022 and not have a sick day for no one sick day for a rail worker? It doesn't make any sense. Um, during during the art pandemic, of the compromise, by the way. unfortunately, which happens <laughs> when I'm everybody's sorry, getting sick. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but. Uh, it's the art of the compromise in politics in order to get those Republican votes. You know, he had to give something and he did. They did get a, I think it's a 25% raise. So perhaps they'll be able to stay home a day without pay and and make up for that in the 25%. Also, President Biden says he'll continue to work for them to get to for a national sick pay legislation that would demand that employers do three to four days a year of sick pay. Yeah, I, you know, and the railroads are making ha- money hand over fist. I mean, now that we're back in, you know, not post COVID, but we're pretending like it's post COVID uh, and people are working, uh, the, the railroad lines are full. You know, the, the supply chain is jammed. They're making money hand over fist and that they can't afford a sick day or two for uh, their workers is, is embarrassing and they ought to be, it's a shameful thing. Yeah, I mean, and I, I think the, the last thing I would just say on this is uh, they wanted a compromise, as you say, to avoid a rail strike or even a temporary shutdown or whatever might have happened to interrupt what is already a struggling uh, economy that's getting back on its feet from the standpoint of the supply chain, right? And all of a sudden you'd have this, this would be a body blow to this economy. So I think there was some of that or a lot of that that was going into this uh, in arithmetic as well, right? Yeah, but uh, that would also speak to uh, why not give the rail workers what they wanted. I don't think yeah. if the rail workers would have gotten the day that the railroads were going to shut down. Um, there was more of a danger of the of the union employees rejecting this package because it didn't have any sick pay in it. Right. Uh, so right. I don't know I that so. that figured in this the calculations for the what the final agreement was. 
Uh, oh, no, 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 no. What I was saying is that the, the desire on the part of Congress and the president right. to get this done and to essentially, they, oh, yeah. they, in my judgment, they side with Matt, they decided with management. That was done because they didn't want an interruption in rail service. It's that simple. They could have, they could have, they could have multi, your point is to get that agreement, they had to eliminate the sick leave. Yeah. They could have forced the sick leave deal on them. Also, you know, they could have mandated the three days sick leave, whatever annually, and then this existing agreement. It, it was clear that they just, in my judgment, lean toward management. And that surprised no one. Exactly. Right. Uh, Jim, <laughs> I love, America. you know, you, 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 should, you should see the love you get in the chat. People are so uh, glad every time you weigh in. Just great takes, great insights. Jim Avila is uh, a regular here, and we really appreciate it, pal. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And uh, Herschel Walker is going to win in Georgia, by the way. I'm sorry you, we didn't is get the, that from Michael. Is that, you, do you really think he'll Latest win? This poll is up 5%, 4%. Bite your tongue. No. Wow. Oh, no, wait. I just misspoke. Oh, you got all those nice comments off. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to say you mean Warnock Raphael Warnock. Okay, God. Uh, Warnock right? is, oh my is, is God. Great. God. Let me leave. Oh. They're, They're sorry, looking at your out. social media. They're looking at your social media. A werewolf to kill a vampire. Do you know that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying. Obama, I'd be willing to bet my lunch that <laughs> there's alcohol. Obama, um, <laughs> yeah, Obama was. Obama did a great run. I actually had it ready to go here but we just are so far behind i can't yeah. run it but That's obama did a whole thing on it's great yeah he, if, uh, I, if before the end of the show i'll try to run it yeah yeah, yeah. it's okay. really it's really really terrific Once uh again, jim Owl, everybody that was a terrible error well it got everybody's attention i'll tell you that <laughs> jim Owl, everyone that kid was right gonna on. jump off the golden gate bridge oh uh, for a good. minute for all right minute. thanks jim good stuff jim avila from abc